How about mushrooms? This is something that, you know, just doing a little bit of research before we hit record, this is something that I don't necessarily go to right out of the gate, but I've been using mushrooms for a long time. I know you and I personally have been taking mushrooms for a long time. And it turns out that, for example, lion's mane mushroom has some really, I would say probably just as impressive as some of the other herbs you're mentioning, whether it's like uh, DGL licorice or marshmallow, kind of the conventional gut healing ones. Lion's mane has some really awesome anti-inflammatory properties. There were two papers that we had found here on lion's mane mushroom being shown to protect from and shrink gastric ulcers. Also, lion's mane was shown to significantly improve symptoms of two major inflammatory disorders of the digestive system. And so that's cool because normally we're using lion's mane for cognitive problems. I know for me, my brain is much more clear. I've got lion's mane mushroom in my system right now. I took two capsules this morning and I certainly feel it mentally, but I did not even think that I was feeling it in my gut. So that's cool. Totally. Yeah. I think that's really important. Again, a lot of gut issues, the immune system can be a big player at it. And so of course, if you're able to modulate the immune system with the medicinal mushrooms or immunogenic compounds that are going to be in those mushrooms, whether it's beta one, three, you know, glucan, whatever that is, it could have an effect on gut permeability and improving digestion. So I think all that's very, very important. Also, just kind of one pet peeve of mine, someone in the comments was chatting about this. Um, a lot of people, when they talk about leaky gut, they talk about leaky gut like, like it's the cause of a problem. Leaky gut is the effects of, on what's happening with the gut. So the more inflamed you are, the more you're not breaking down your food, the more crappy the food is, the more inflammatory the food is, the more dysbiosis we have, the, the, the lack of certain nutrients we have, the more stress we are, right? All that then creates and increases the chance of gut permeability. Gut permeability isn't the cause unto itself. It's the effects of a lot of other issues happening. So when people talk about, oh, you got to fix the leaky gut, it's like... Not necessarily, you know, it's like, it's like saying, oh, we have to fix, imagine you have a leak in your roof and the water's pooling on the carpet below. You say, oh, we got to fix that water on the floor. It's like, no, 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 you fix the hole in the roof. And I, again, it may be semantics, but we, we got to call a spade a spade. If the water's coming into the roof, you talk say, we got to fix the hole in the roof. You don't say we fix the, the water on the ground, right? So I just want everyone, I want to train everyone to kind of get thinking about things from a root cause standpoint versus labeling the the damage at the end result. Conventional medicine is really good at labeling damage down here and not talking about the effects up top that, that should that the cause up top. They're labeling the effects down here. So we want to go root cause. Yeah, that that's great. And I'm sure we could come up with other analogies on it, but that makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like, okay, we need to come in with the towel. Oh no, now we have the super absorbent towel. This towel is going to absorb a thousand times more water on your floor than any other towel. And then yes. this this carpet is mold resistant. So if you use this carpet, that water in your carpet won't create mold, but you're still missing the freaking hole in the roof. Roof, exactly, exactly.